I do want to welcome you all getting out in this crazy weather. I know it's not crazy yet, but, uh, you know, it's getting there probably, maybe. So, but seriously though, thank you for coming out today. And it's my understanding that the, uh, the Chiefs play at some point. Brittany probably knows when that is, but I don't. What? Okay, so I've got, I've got until 325. That's good. No, we, uh, we had our pastor's meeting the other day, and, and Rod and James and I, and one of the things that we talked about is our, our time frame, you know what I mean? Like, uh, we don't want to go so long that we just lose you guys, you know, but we don't just want to come in and, and say hi and bye and be done with it, like we're here for a reason, right? And... Uh, and I'm not entertaining enough to keep you guys until 3:25. So, uh, so I'm going to try to try to keep it at a decent time, so nobody falls asleep and falls out of the window like that kid that um, kid in the Bible. But at least he got prayed for and he was raised from the dead, so that's good. Um, why don't we go ahead and just pray this morning again? Mm. Good morning, Father. Lord, we love you, and we thank you that we do get to gather together, that we do still have the opportunity to do this without being persecuted and thrown in prison and beat and all those other crazy things that happen to people around the world. And God, I just pray that you'll have your way here today. Holy Spirit, I just invite you to come. And just speak through me. God, we love you. Help us to learn to follow you in Jesus' name. All right. I'm just a little hot out there, it sounds like. Can you turn my volume down just slightly? So we do have a new political party in power here in the U.S., but I know that leading up to that, you know, everybody was was really praying hardcore for for that political party to, um, you know, for whatever party you guys were voting for to take power. Um, But I want us to understand that that no matter what political party is in power, it's not going to change the heart problem that is in our country, you know? And we can't put our our faith and our hope and our trust in a political party. We we just simply can't. Do I feel like that that it makes a difference um, for morals and values and standards? I hope so. I do hope so. And I think that 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 influence can help to change. But a political party, no matter which one it is, isn't going to get people to heaven. And I look at the world today, especially our country here, and, and we're split, you know. The other day I was thinking about how our government was formed and all that. And, and it is good to have... Uh, contrasting views on things. You know, it helps to be more robust. Like our our uh, elder team here even, um, we don't all think the same. And we can't all think the same. You know, that's what helps to make it balanced out. But, but today, you know, Rod taught a message a while back um, uh, talking about ditches on both sides of the road. And kind of down the, the middle of that road is where you want to go. But today it just seems like so many people are either way over here or they're way over here and there's people on both sides just losing their mind. You know? Yeah. And, and it's like, man, what's going on? But I feel like that that happens whenever people lose sight of what really matters, of who really matters. And, you know, the enemy will use anything to get us distracted. 
Because if you're distracted, you're not looking at the Savior. You're looking at these, these political issues or these political um, opponents and, and you're so focused because it's like, man, I, I, I really want this. This is what needs to happen or, or this is what needs to happen over here. Um, but what needs to happen is, is truly that, that third great awakening. What needs to happen is revival in the land and there's not gonna be healing here until that, no matter who takes office. Is anybody on social media? I am uh, sometimes and more now than I should be, by far more than I should be. But I just want to encourage you guys to, um, to be careful to not be too influenced. You know, your attitude, your emotions, things like that. Um, I want to encourage you to probably not be like 99% of the people on social media you know, or the things that you're being fed on social media because, man, that will start to, it'll affect your, your outlook on things. It'll affect the way that you communicate with people, the way that you share with people, the way that you care about people because, you know, whenever I was a cop, I saw so much of this, just the bad to the bad to the bad, and it was like bad all the time, you know, hardly ever any good. And so then it, it makes you think the worst about everybody. Like, well, is there really any good in the world at all? Like, because all I see is just this nonstop, horrible stuff. And so it kind of starts to taint your, your heart and your, and your mind and your perspective on things and your perception of, of people. But guys, we can't do that. We have to have our hearts and our minds and our perceptions and our perspectives of people to be what God wants them to be. But, you know, my mom used to always tell me that, that uh, you, you will become the people that you hang out with, you know, and, and junk in and junk out. You know, she was so, um, thank God for her, she was so determined for me to not listen to some particular music and stuff. Not, I mean, she wasn't like way overboard, but there was some stuff. Like my cousin brought over this tape. And I'm not even going to say the name of the artist because all of you would be like, what? Well, most of you, anybody that knew the artist. And my brother and I, we were, we were in our bedroom one day. We had the tape player, you know, and we had the tape in there and we were listening to it and we had it down low because let's face it, mom has ears of a, I don't know, what, what hears really well. Bat, yeah, yeah, exactly. But I'm not going to call her an old bat because she watches these almost every one of them, you know. So, Mom, you're not an old bat. That wasn't me that said that. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But seriously, like she could hear everything. My brother and I, we couldn't get away with anything. My oldest daughter, she's like, she tells us about stuff that she did, and we're like, we don't want to hear that. Like, and how do I not know about it? With all the technology, I do know about a lot. A lot of things they don't even know that I know about. But then she comes in, she starts telling these stories about things, and I'm like, what? No. But my mom, she knew everything. Before I even got back home, she would know. So we're sitting in our room listening to this music that we 100% should not have, no one in the, in the world should listen to it, let alone us as little boys, you know. She comes in, oh boy, she was not happy. And... uh she wasn't happy with our cousin just as much as she wasn't happy with us. I think we probably threw him under the bus. I can't remember, but I mean, I'm not going to take the fall for all that, you know. I didn't make the tape. But the fact is, by my mom helping to protect my ears, protect what was going into my head, I do believe that it had a significant impact on on me and the way that I grew up and stuff. Because the more trash that's just being pumped into you, the more it's going to affect how you act, how you walk, talk, everything. It, it honestly does. And so we have to be very cautious about what we're taking in and what we're digesting. And, you know, um, Brittany and I sometimes will we'll hear songs that we used to just jam out to. Not her, obviously, but, but more so me. And she's shaking her head. But we'll, 
we'll turn on music or, or watch a movie or something that we hadn't heard in the last 20, 30 years. And we're like, what? Oh my goodness. I used to, I used to sing along to this. And she's like, well, it just had a, it had a good beat. You know, it'd suck you right in. And that's what it does. It just sucks you in, you know, entertainment in general just sucks you in social media, especially you just sit there and scroll and scroll and scroll. And then hours later, you're like, what is, where am I? What in the world? It's been hours, you know, and nothing good went in. Nothing good. So I just encourage you guys to don't let your attitude be affected by social media or the news. Like I, I literally stopped watching the news. People are like, hey, did you see this? Or did you hear about this? I'm like, nope, I didn't. Probably should have, but I didn't. Because <laughs> I just can't stand watching the news. But God has, has truly called us. And the reason, the reason why we can't continue to just pump that stuff in is because God has called us to be different. He's called us to be in the world, but not of the world. He's called us to affect our area of influence. He's called us to love on people like he loves on people. And if, if all we're doing is taking in the way that the world acts and responds to people, then we're going to be acting and responding to people the way that the world does instead of the way that God wants us to. And it's just a natural response, you know? So we've got, to be, we've got to be filling ourselves with him. God calls us to love people in a way that will transform them because that's what he's done. That's what he does to us. He loves us in a way that transforms our life. Any of you in here that have a relationship with God know that you've been transformed, you are not the person that you used to be. I think it was Paul, Peter or Paul, I think it was Paul, says, it's no longer I live, but Christ that lives in me. I want to be to that place. I don't know about you guys, but do you ever sit there and you, and you think about who you are and what you look like, what you sound like whenever you're around people? I do that with myself and kind of that self-reflection, like, if, if Jesus was manifest right here in the flesh with me, would I be who he wants me to be? Would I be um, truly making him proud? And the word says that he never leaves us. He doesn't forsake us. So he is right there, but it'd make a big difference if you could see him every day, right? Maybe, hopefully. So I think, am who I'm being right now is who I am transforming other people and transforming their lives for the better? Or am I rubbing off bad habits on them? Am I rubbing off bad attitudes on them? And to be perfectly honest with you, sometimes I'm being good for people and sometimes I'm not being good for people. So I have to constantly ask him, Lord, renew me, renew my mind. I know you transformed me. Make me more like the person you've transformed me to be so that I can help transform these people so that I can walk in your footsteps and walk in your ways. You know, um, Romans 2, 4 says, it's his kindness that leads us to repentance. And so if we're around somebody, if you're around people or a group of people that's not acting or 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 responding the way that, that you feel is honorable and moral and, and correct, then be that for them. Be that example for them, no matter how hard it is. Even if you don't like them, especially if you don't like them, you know? There was a quote that um, somebody, oh man, I, I don't know exactly who said it, but, but when I heard it at first, it kind of, I'm like, I know that's probably right, but I really don't like it. Um, they said, your love of God is not tested by the way that you love Jesus. It's tested by the way that you love Judas. And I'm like, well, I don't want to love Judas. Judas deserved to die. That's, that's kind of the way that I, you know, that's my, my normal, natural instinct. And, and honestly, <clears throat> Jesus even said that Satan filled him. And Jesus even said that he was set aside for destruction. 
So I'm like, okay, that, that helps me justify the way that I, I feel for Judas. But seriously, if the world looks at me and I'm acting and responding to somebody that I feel like might as well be Judas, how's that going to make them think and feel about somebody that's supposed to be transformed and walking in the ways that God wants them to walk, you know? And I don't know about you, but it, it just flows out sometimes. So I have to renew my mind daily. I've got to constantly be in the Word because the Word is what's going to help me walk and talk and look and act like God. His kindness leads us to repentance. You know, I, I, I do talk a lot about humility because it's absolutely vital. And if if a political party isn't going to usher in the third great awakening, I do believe that there is a third great awakening. The word talks about it. And I do believe that it's coming. And I do believe that it's coming quickly. But I want to be part of what ushers that in. I want to be doing what he wants me to do, what he's created me to do. And so if I want to do that, I have to be rooted and grounded in humility. Have you been around somebody that's arrogant? And do you want to hang out with them? No, not typically. Not unless you have just this really low self-esteem and they've somehow tricked you into wanting to be around them. Usually, if you are around somebody that's arrogant, boastful, proud, you know, puffed up, you don't want to be around people like that, right? But don't you think that it's probably easier for us today than it was two weeks ago for us to be possibly walking around, you know, arrogant, you know, puffed up, ha, 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 ha. The party that I voted for won. If we didn't vote for the other party, it's probably because we don't believe in their morals, their values, their standards, what they, what they, what they stand for. And if we don't believe in that, then it leads us to believe that there are people that do believe in that. Well, do we just want policy to change or do we want their hearts and minds to change? Do we want them to be changed from the inside out? They're not going to change by us being proud and arrogant and say, ha, 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 you know, we won, you didn't win. Nobody's going to. It's just not, it's just not going to happen. But if it's his kindness that leads people to repentance, then we too must be kind. We too must be humble. And I'm not saying let somebody that's, that's just overbearing and overpowering just walk right over you, you know. Kindness and humility doesn't mean that you let somebody stay where they are, right? It means that, that you love them and, and you... You think strategically about how God wants you to communicate with them, communicate to them, you know, show them the love. If, we, if our Lord and Savior is hanging on a cross, you know, completely tortured, tormented, and literally moments away from death and says, Father, forgive them, they don't know what they're doing, can we, can we try to grab a little bit of that attitude? Can we try to, try to grab at least a little bit of it? You know, I think a little bit goes a long way. And the more that we do that, the more we respond out of love and out of kindness and communicate in a way that's not aggressive, that's not, you know, beating somebody over the head, then the more likely that kindness is going to lead them to repentance. You know, and the word says that if we lift him up, if we lift Christ up, that he will draw all people unto himself. It doesn't say if we lift him up, then we can draw all people unto himself. It means that he's going to, but we've got to lift him up. And what lifting him up means is if we look like him, if we show the world him, if we act like him and walk like him and talk like him, that's going to draw all people unto himself. So you can be a part. We're supposed to be a part. We're going to be a part. I heard a quote from a pastor the other day. He said, 
winning with pride and arrogance, is a short-term victory with no eternal value. Here in the U.S., we have, we have term limits, at least on presidents right now. We have term limits. So it's kind of like the weather in Missouri. If you don't like it, stick around. It's going to change. Things are going to change in the political realm. We're not going to win anything eternal in the political realm. As, as far as, well, you, you understand what I'm saying. But... We won't make any eternal change in anyone, in anyone whatsoever, if we go at it with pride and arrogance. You can be happy, you can be glad, you can rejoice, you can all that stuff, because there will be good changes uh, to come, I'm sure. But please be, please be cautious. You know, whenever I'm on social media and I see some of the ways that people respond and people react and, and you know, um, some people that are happy are, are super, super happy. Some people that are sad are super, super sad. And I mean, just like crying and they're broken and you can see that they're broken and they're legitimately broken. Well, if someone's broken hearted, what are we supposed to do? We aren't supposed to rejoice with them when they mourn. We're supposed to mourn with them when they mourn and rejoice with them when they rejoice. Now, I'm not saying that we should rejoice if, if somebody has a victory that goes against our morals and values and standards. That's not what I'm saying. But I am saying think about those people and their hurt and, and what can you do for them when they're hurt. If God tells us to love our enemies, he says, what's it benefit you? If, if you love your friends and family, it benefits you some peace, you know. But what's it truly benefit you eternally if you love someone that doesn't love you? You know, if, he, if someone asks you to go with them a mile, carry their stuff for a mile, go with them two miles. If they ask for, for your coat, give them your shirt too. These types of principles we don't really practice them very much anymore. And, and honestly, we don't even teach them very much anymore because they're hard to teach. I, it's hard for me to even to think about because I know that I don't do it all the time. I know that I don't do it very much. How am I supposed to stand up here and tell you to do it? I'm a work in progress too. Love one another. I am. <clears throat> the reason that I, I titled this Just Follow is because it's not our natural instinct to, to love people that are unlovable or that we view as unlovable. But Jesus does. So we can just follow him. It's not always easy to do the hard things, but he says that we can do all things through Christ that gives us strength. And we can follow him because he, he does all those things. If, it's, if we can do all things because he gives us the strength, then we've got to follow him. He says, take up your cross and follow me. I find it interesting that when he made that statement, he hadn't gone to the cross yet. He hadn't picked up his cross. But, but even the disciples, they say, I'll follow you anywhere. I'll go with you. Like, we'll, we'll go together. Even, even Thomas at one point, whenever they were going into Jerusalem, he says, well, let's go with him. We'll just die together. You know, let's go die with him. And uh, whenever the, the sons of thunder, they were they were asking or their mom was asking for them to have these places of honor in heaven. And, and Jesus says, it's not for me. But he also goes and says, can you drink from the cup that I'm going to drink from? And they say, yeah. And, and I think that was Peter. But uh, 
He says, you're going to. But, (laughs) that's a hard thing, man. That's a hard thing. But we do have to take up our cross and we do have to follow after him. And taking up your cross means that you've got to crucify your flesh. You've got to die to your fleshly desires. I mean, you, you can't lash out to people like the way that we want to lash out at people. It means whenever I'm driving down the road and somebody's going five miles an hour under the speed limit in the passing lane or what I call the fast lane, I'm not supposed to lash out at them and call them names and stuff. <clears throat> But I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So I'm standing on that word. I think about the disciples and Jesus' relationship with them. Like, you know, he he is baptized in water. He is baptized with the Holy Spirit. The, The Holy Spirit comes down on him. He goes out and he's tested in the wilderness. And then he goes in and he he starts building his team. He starts drawing in people. Look at these people that he draws in. I don't have time to go into detail on all of them, but I I encourage you to if you haven't. But he didn't go into the synagogues. He didn't go into the temple and start picking these most holy people that he, he certainly could have, but he didn't. He went out into the world and picked people just like me and you. I think he did that to encourage us. He says, he says to these fishermen, fishermen, I, we live right smack in the middle of the, of the continent, right? So I'm, I'm not real versed in, in fishermen's lifestyle and stuff. But if they're anything like Navy guys, um, they probably cuss a lot and they probably are pretty rough and, and all that stuff. But they're, in my mind, they're probably a lot like construction workers today. I, I've done a lot of construction and stuff. But if you walk onto any just basic construction project, you're probably not going to find a bunch of people that are acting like, you know, that person has their stuff together. They, I'm going to have them come represent me and the Father and the kingdom of heaven, you know. That probably wasn't the place that they were at in their lives. But he says, come and follow me and I will make you fishers of men. He relates to them and he has them He talks to them in a way that helps them to understand that he's going to impact the way that they can affect their area of influence. It's going to draw them in. Even look at at Matthew, right? He was a tax collector. He's in his tax collecting booth. And whenever the word talks about um, sinners, a lot of times it says tax collectors and sinners and so on and so on and so on, right? Like they're all lumped in together. And while he's doing the thing that the word talks about being a sinner, while he's doing the exact thing, Jesus comes up and says, follow me. Follow me. Because Jesus, look at these, at the statement that he makes with the fishermen. He says, come follow me and I will make you fishers of men. I'll make you. You're not just going to transform yourself. You're not just going to watch me and and hopefully do what I do and boom, everything's going to be great. He says, I will make you fishers of men. He influences. It's his kindness that leads us to forgiveness. So even what what did Peter say? Whenever they drag in this net full of fish, he says, Get away from me, Lord, or depart from me, Lord, for I'm a, I'm a sinful person. He recognized his sin. And he knew that he wasn't worthy, but guess what? None of us are worthy. The Word says that no one's worthy, not even one person is worthy. Only Jesus is worthy. So no matter where you are in life, where did God call you from? What tax collecting booth did he call you from? What did he take you out of? I think about the life that he he took me out of, that he transformed me from. And believe me, at that point in time, I wasn't uh, the best of people by any means, not even remotely close. But that's where he met me. And he saw worth. He saw value. 
Where were you whenever he saw the value in you and the worth in you? Or whenever, whenever he allowed you to realize that he saw the value and the worth in you? Thank you, Jesus, for seeing the worth and the value in us because he comes after us. He comes after us. He chases after us. That is something, and he chases after other people. You know he chases after people that you don't think should make it into heaven? You don't think are, are worthy? Um, maybe they've done something to you that really hurt you. He goes after them too. He wants them too. He doesn't want them to be that same way whenever they hurt you, but he wants to renew them, transform them into something new. He says, follow me. And I think whenever he wants us to follow him, that means that we're going to have to change our thoughts and our opinions a little bit, you know. It's okay for us to have our own thoughts and opinions, but sometimes, well, every time, all the time, we have to say, not my will, but your will be done. Not what I want, Lord, but what you want. Because your ways are higher than my ways. Your thoughts are clearly higher than my thoughts. Not my will, but yours be done. I promise you that whenever you surrender that kind of control, he's going to change the world with you. You might not even see it and recognize it like that. We might not know the effect that we have on people until we get into eternity. I had a friend call me, or well, actually, I called him the other day. We hadn't talked in a long time. And uh, God had put me in, in the right place at the right time and put words in my mouth to, to help him recognize who Jesus is. I'm not trying to say this to sound, you know, to toot my own horn or anything like that whatsoever. Please understand, hear my, hear my heart here. But my heart was for him to step out of the lifestyle that he was in and come into a relationship with Jesus. I, I couldn't do that. I couldn't pull him out of that lifestyle and make him change. I couldn't say, wake up. Wake up. Like, life can be so much better. But it was, it was this situation where I was able to be around him consistently. And so I just continued to pour into him. I'm kind of hard-headed and stubborn sometimes. And uh, I just continued to pour into him. And, and uh, God really started to get a hold of his life and change him. And he ended up coming into a full relationship with Jesus, giving his life over to Jesus. It was amazing, but on this phone call, he was... He started crying and thanking me for, for showing him Jesus, you know? And, and I hadn't talked to him in quite some time. And to have this conversation with him, to hear his growth, I mean, it just, it was the best thing, ever, the best present anyone could ever be given. He's sitting there quoting scripture, talking like, like he truly obviously has a deep, intimate, passionate relationship with Jesus. And I, I don't care... Uh, it, no gift ever could be better than hearing that. You know what I mean? Like nothing, nothing can compare because you understand that, that this, this soul that Jesus loves, that, that God created to have relationship with him was going to burn in hell because he was rejecting God. And now he's going to spend eternity with the Father, with Jesus that's exciting to Jesus and it should be exciting to us. And, and we have that opportunity to be able to, to, to just impact people's lives if we're just willing to listen to the Holy Spirit and say, hey, please give me opportunities to be able to and then please make me obedient. 
Make me obedient, even if it's scary. Even if you're sitting with this person in a situation that, uh, or an atmosphere that you really don't necessarily want to be in because it's kind of uncomfortable. But if you don't get in those uncomfortable atmospheres and in those uncomfortable situations, who's going to go pull them out? Like, who's going to lead them out? Sometimes we have to get a little uncomfortable to do what God is calling us to do. So I titled this Just Follow because it's easy for us to have our own wants, desires, opinions of what we should do. And sometimes Jesus is saying, that's not what I have for you. And that's not, that's, this isn't the time and place. Now, right now is the time and place for you to get behind me and just follow me. Just follow, just do what I tell you to do. And, and it's going to work out. It's going to be great. But man, that is, that can be really, really stinking scary because we have our own plans. We know what we want to do or what we think we want to do. But we have to surrender our will to the Lord. When we're following somebody, we're not leading them, they're leading us. We have a tendency, though, to want to lead God. God, this is where I'm going. Come along with me. Instead of saying, God, where do you want me to go so I can come along with you? Does anybody else have that tendency or am I, am I all by myself here? <laughs> he says, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Follow me, follow me. Well, you're not going to lead him. You can, you can make your petitions known to him, but you also have to surrender your will. I promise you, whenever you do that, life will be better for you. I remember um, in the Marine Corps, we were out in in the desert. And I may have told this story before, I don't remember. But it was pretty impactful because we had been out there for a long time. And we were supposed to be going back uh, back to the main base, back to our barracks. And man, we were dirty and stinky and nasty. I mean... Marine Corps Infantry, when we go out, (laughs) we go out, (laughs) you know. We're working on training and all that stuff. We're not working on hygiene and whatever. And uh, we were all very, very, very ready to get back because once we got back, we would be able to actually take a shower. And I'm talking weeks, probably a month that we hadn't. Taking field baths with like the little wet wipes that come in the MREs and trying to get, uh, trying to get, some of that nastiness off. It just doesn't work out well. But uh, we're going back, and it was already dark by now. We should have already been back, but we had this new lieutenant that was uh, uh, the company XO, and he's, he's gung-ho. He's leading the way, right? And I know where we're going because I've been out there. I've been out there for a lot longer than this guy was and he thought that he knew where we were going and I told my uh, my platoon leader I said hey we're supposed to be going that way like you see that mountain ridge right there that's where we're supposed to be going but he's taking us this way he goes yeah I know I go well are you going to say something and he's like no I'm, I'm not I go can I he goes be my guest <laughs> like he doesn't know what this what this lieutenant's like you know I mean he's pretty new so he could be a super arrogant and, uh, uh, you know, prideful person to make my life a whole lot worse. But one thing I knew is life was going to get worse the longer we went this direction. <laughs> and so I went up and just started kind of chatting with him. And I'm like, hey, sir, how are you doing? And he's like, good, good, how are you? You know, and real motivated guy. Ended up being a great guy. Love him. But this was my first, like, actual conversation with him. And I said, uh... Are we going to going to do some more training somewhere? And he says, "No, we're headed back to base." And I said, "Oh, um, well, we're going in the wrong direction to get back to base." And he goes, "We are." I said, "Yes, sir." So the base is that way. He's like, "Are you sure?" I said, "Yes, sir." He goes, "All right, well, you stay here and and you lead you lead the way." And I'm like, "Okay." So I got to lead the way. 
And I got us back, you know, as fast as we could get back. But my point to that is, is when you're going to follow someone, I didn't have a choice on who I was following that day. But if you're going to follow someone, make sure they know where they're going. Make sure if you make a decision to follow someone, that they're going to lead you to a place that's beneficial for you, not to a place that's going to be harmful for you. And one thing I can tell you for sure is that God knows where you're going. He knows the plans that he has for you. He's, he's the one that literally created every single cell in your body. <laughs> he's the one that gave you the eyes to see and the, the lungs to breathe with. So he knows where you're going. He says, when we don't know the way, he says, I'm the way. I'm the truth. I'm the life. If you follow me, you're going to get to the Father. He says, follow me. Because he's the way. So I encourage you to follow him. And then I want to ask you a question. Are you following him? Or are you trying to lead? Right now, where you are in your life, are you following? Or are you trying to lead? Are you trying to generate something, create a life for you that makes sense to you? Or are you truly surrendered to him and following after him, following his will, his leading, his desires? I don't know if you are or not. You may very well be. You may not be. Maybe in some areas you are, some areas you aren't. But he wants you to surrender everything. And no matter what the, the political atmosphere looks like right now, or even for years to come, if the word is true, if the Bible is true, we're going to get to a place where we're not going to be able to trust anyone else to have our best interest in mind as far as government goes. And by following him, truly following him, may be very uncomfortable for us. It may feel like we're still wandering around out there in the desert, trying to find our way back to base that feels somewhat normal. But if this is not our home, and we're just aliens and strangers just passing through, sojourners, the word says, just passing through, that we're to be in the world and not of the world, then this isn't our home anyway. And our focus, our goal, our end goal should be there. It shouldn't be here. We shouldn't be focused on, well, I have to make this decision because it's going to give me a nice, comfortable outcome here. Listen, you have eternity to be comfortable. He says, enter into my rest. But he didn't say, that your life here on earth is going to be his rest. He didn't. In fact, he said the exact opposite. So please, please, whatever you do, make every decision in your life based on that, based on that goal, that end goal. This is going to last forever. And no matter what, you may have gained the whole world here. It's not going to bring you happiness. It's not going to bring you joy. And no matter how much you gain here, it's not going to get you there. And I, I assure you that you can trust him where he's leading you. No matter what it looks like here. You remember Paul was being led. We just finished up Acts. Where was he being led? He was being led to Rome. And everybody prophesied, dude, you're going to die there. The people that are hearing from God are telling him you're going to die there. That's not the most convenient outcome for us physically, is it? <laughs> but he knew this is where God told him to go. This is what God told him to do. 
we're following a Savior that literally was following the Father that led him to a physical death. But that death ultimately conquered death, sin, and the grave for all of us. I have, I have news for you. Some of you might not know this, but every single person in this room, unless Jesus comes back, we're all going to die. I know that's a shocker. Whew. But one day, every one of us is going to meet that end. Unless the rapture happens. Hey, cool. If it does, that'd be pretty awesome. But if not, we're all going to meet that end. Let's live in a way that's going to make him proud, that's going to make him um, say, welcome home, my good and faithful servant. Enter into my rest. We can all do it through Christ who gives us strength. Today I'm going to wrap up and just uh, pray for us. I'm not going to have a, a full song afterwards, um, but we'll have some some light music playing. If if anybody wants prayer for anything, uh, I encourage you to come and get prayer. Uh, if you've got kids back in the kids fellowship, please go get them. But if you feel like that you need prayer before that, then come get prayer before that. Holy Spirit, I pray that you will touch every one of our hearts and our minds. Pray that you will root yourself down into each of us. So that it is no longer us that lives, but you who lives through us, God, because you are what really matters. God, we pray that we will be the instruments, the tools that you've created to accomplish your tasks and purposes here on this earth. But God, I pray that we won't be so focused on those tasks and those purposes that we make them more important than you are to us. Lord, I pray that you will bring us, each and every one of us, at the sound of my voice, Lord, bring us deeper into this passionate relationship with you so that when you move, we see you move, so that when you say follow us, we can actually follow you because we know where you're going, because we hear your voice as your sheep. Lord, I pray over this congregation, I pray that that every single one of them will recognize the importance of following you Give them the the strength, Lord. Give them the ability to be be obedient. I thank you, Lord, that by your stripes we are healed. God, I pray over everyone that has any kind of infirmity in their body that they've been focused on that pain and that hurt. And they've been crying out to you saying, God, your word says that by your stripes I am healed. Why am I still dealing with this? Father, I just speak healing over them, Lord. I pray that they will be healed so that you will get the glory. I thank you, Lord, that you hear my prayers. And I also pray, God, that no matter what any of our situations are, God, that we will no longer focus on our circumstances, but we will focus on you and we will put you first. And that we will step out in faith knowing that you have our best interest in mind and knowing that you can accomplish anything in us and through us. Lord, I pray over these people as they go out into the world today, God, that, that you will be with them, you will protect them, Lord, but that you will lead them and guide them into all truth, that you will give them divine appointments and opportunities to be able to share your love with the people that you have created them to be able to affect that area. God, we love you. 
And we do dedicate our lives to you today in Jesus' name. Amen.